Hi everyone, it's Mike here. Thanks for joining me for another Art Journal page start to finish video. Different today, I'm going to be using some collage elements that I created myself in Photoshop. So you can see here, this is the sheet that I've already printed out and I've made a start on cutting them all out. Fussy cutting with a knife, I am allowed. I am old enough, I have a note from my mother to say I can do. And you can see I've speeded this up to three times its normal speed, so you don't have to sit there watching me cut this out, which can be very, very boring. If you're wondering about the actual image itself, this is a vintage photograph that I obtained um, from a royalty-free, um, copyright-free source on the internet. And this is what the picture looked like to start off with. As you can see, a beautiful picture and I photoshopped her, cut her out of the background, added some different wings and gave her a vintage hand tint effect. So there you go. Touching off the fussy cutting around the, the image, making sure that I include her antenna and the spaces between her wings and just tidying up where um, I've not cut her out exactly accurately because after a few coffees my hands do shake a little bit. Okay so I'm bringing in the Distress Ink which is the tea dye and using a Sukuniko finger dauber I'm just going to add some of that tea dye Distress Ink around the edges. Now primarily this is just to hide those raw white edges and any little mess ups that I may have made when I was cutting her out. But also it just adds that little bit of an aged feel to it. So I will be doing it to the other elements as well, um, which is the mushroom um, that I also have pre-cut out before starting the video because I forgot. So this is the printed sheet that I created with those elements on there. You can see the holes for the mushroom and for my little rainy day fairy. Um, I did three quotes or three sayings for this page but because I couldn't decide which one to use but in the end I went for the last one which you'll see what it is in a second. Now rather than cutting it out in straight lines I decided I wanted to tear it. Um, so this is what I'm doing now. I'm just tearing those edges and not being particularly um, too careful because I did want them to have rough edges to it but one of them I didn't get the spacing quite right so I did end up cutting the edge off altogether because I couldn't get my fingers in to tear off the um, a little thin strip so I ended up cutting it with a knife and then as you'll see I ended up roughing and scruffing up the edges with the blade from a pair of scissors Okay, so we're going on to the art journal itself. This is the Large Dilutions Journal. And these are two sheets that uh, I'm going to use for my underpaper. The one that you can see me tearing now is one of my faux jelly prints that I did with the silicon baking mat. And the book page you can see there was one downloaded from the internet from the same royalty free source that I got the fairy from. So I'm going to stick those down onto my pages using matte medium and I'm going to completely cover the page with the matte medium to make sure that it is completely sealed. I'm making sure I get plenty of that matte medium on because it is a large area to stick down in one go. You might just be able to see that there is a little bit of an overhang on each of the pages from that sheet. Um, I wanted this just so that I can, once it was all stuck down, that I could actually tear those overhangs off to keep that raw edge effect. So 
now I'm just sticking down those two halves of the book page. So just going to give it a blast of the heat tool just to make sure that everything is completely dry before adding on some gesso which I'm going to put over the page just to tone down some of those colours and try and hide the joins between. Um, it doesn't really matter that you can see the joins because it just adds to that effect on the page anyway but I just wanted to try and tone down some of the really really strong colours and kind of blend it all together. And then I'm just bringing in a baby wipe and just going over and blending that paint uh, or the, sorry the gesso um, and then I've just swapped into a brand, a brand new clean one because I was just smearing paint around and it wasn't really looking right. So there you see me just tearing those edge strips off now to give it that raw edged effect. It's all starting to come together. So I'm just adding a little bit more paint, just a little bit more of that gesso and just blending it in with that baby wipe. Okay, so I'm just adding a little bit more gesso to the top because I want to start doing or do a drip effect on this one. So I'm just going to give it a heat blast before I bring in my first colour layer. And I'm using the uh, Tattered Angels Glimmer Mists and this is the turquoise one. And then I'm using the heat tool just to push some of those rivulets of colour uh, along the page. If I've got pools of the colour actually on the page itself, I use the heat tool just to try and move them. And then you can see me pushing one down the crease in the middle there and then dabbing it off with a piece of kitchen towel. giving it a final heat seal but I didn't realise that once these were dry you can still reactivate them with uh, with more liquid so I, I did cause a problem later on but I did manage to get around it. So this is a stencil called Distress Dot and it's from a company called That Special Touch Of uh, based here in the UK. It's quite a thick stencil actually, it's very good quality and I'm using the heavy carving moulding paste that I've got and I'm going to be just putting some of that uh, moulding paste through the stencil in random areas across the pages. The good thing about the really heavy carvable moulding paste is that when you put the heat tool on it to, to dry it, if you keep the heat tool on it, it does actually puff up, it actually bubbles, so you actually get some extra dimension to it. Okay, I'm now starting to add on my collage element. Now you'll see when I start adding the gel medium on this one, the matte medium that I use, that it does start to reactivate the um, glimmer mist at the top of the page. It's not too much of a problem, but you know I didn't realise that it wasn't permanent. Because the gel medium was picking up the colour from that glimmer mist, it did um, it did stain or tint the gel medium. So whenever I pasted it or painted it over the top, it did give a little bit of a bluish cast to it. But that didn't really matter because I know I, I can actually remove that with a baby wipe later on. So just adding a little bit more of that glimmer mist on there to the areas where 
I had to wipe it off there. I'm just dabbing it off the wings and the umbrella on her face. So as long as you get in there while it's still wet, you can remove it. It's not a problem at all. So here I'm adding the matte medium ready for my poem, which is going to go on the page. It's just a simple four line poem, which I've chosen for my uh, text on my page. And I'll do a close up in a moment so you can actually read what it says properly. But I'm just going to make sure that it's all stuck well truly down with the, the matte medium. And if I got a little bit of the blue glimmer mist on there, it's not too much of a problem because it does tone it in, but I did just go over quickly with a baby wipe just to see if I could remove any of that tint from it. There you go. So the quote reads, everyone wants happiness, no one needs pain, but you can't have a rainbow without a little rain. Cute. So this is the Stabilo Black All Pencil, which writes on just about anything, which is why they call it an all pencil. So I'm going round my collage elements now and uh, just to give it a little bit of a black outline just to make it pop a little bit and then I'm going to bring in my aqua painter my water brush and just go around that with um, with that just to activate the, the pencil so I'm just doing the same thing for the the four word or the, the sentence blocks on there um, I did have a little bit of a mishap while I was editing so I didn't actually manage to catch um, the bit where I was activating the all pencil around the quote blocks. Um, don't know why, it just didn't seem to record. So my apologies for that, but you get the idea of what I'm doing anyway. There you go, as if by magic it's done. So I'm now getting the gesso again and I'm adding some water to it. I'm just mixing that water with a, well, with a kind of a very um, flexible brush actually and then I'm just going to add some strategic white splatters around the page just to make it look like either dust moat or like like it's raining Okay, so just about done. I'm just removing some of those white flecks where I don't want them from, from off her body and also from the quote blocks and on the page if I've got too much of a splatter on there. And then I'm just going to give it the once over now just to see if there's anything else I've missed if I need to add a little bit more colour, take a little bit of colour away or just tidy up some areas before I call the page done. And there you can see I'm just adding a little bit more of that black all pencil around the top just because I think I wiped a little bit of a way. There we go, I'm happy with that now so all that remains to be done is for me to date stamp and just add my signature at the bottom of the page and that's me for another art journal page start to finish. And just one final thing, if you would like to actually have that finished fairy image to use for yourself, if you pop along to my blog, which you'll see the blog address um, in the description below if you're watching this on YouTube, you can download that image to use for yourself for free. Hope you have fun with it and I'll see you again next time.